I'm Vin. I'm sorry. <laughs> and this is the name of this band. Well, huh? Crimson Glory. Crimson Az Glory. Azrael. Azrael. Uh, this should be interesting. Should probably be a Christian's react to. <gasps> Could be. Uh, uh, this is for the big homie Ryan. It is. Azrael. That's that's one of the uh, like inter intertestamental angels. Like a good one or a the bad Lord. one? Lord. Sounds like a We've bad one. We've talked about Azrael a lot. Is it a bad one? Uh, for, hold on. For entire topical... Well, you're seeing the song when you look at the lyrics. Entire topical political commentary can hit us up at Middle America with Vin and Sori. We've become a lot more active on that channel recently. Mm -hmm. And there are multiple ways to get your song reviewed. Dear listener, my favorite option is the community option. One dollar at the gate gets you sucked into the board in which you can hang out with the with the great Caladros, the legendary... Zonia et al, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it's cool there because you get to pull your points together with your with your alliance and then you get to uh, determine what songs that we listen to. I love that. That's my favorite one. It's a community. Also, when the website pops up, for a single dollar, you will be able to have access to the restricted area of our website. All that jazz. Really, really cool stuff. And then if you're a filthy, selfish capitalist like Sorry... You can take the uh, backstage fast pass option, 125 bucks, get you your song. You get put on the short list, and you get priority for having your song reviewed. And this is what this brother did. Who is this brother? Ryan. Do that three times. You get bumped down to the $75 rate for all perpetuity and uh, all that jazz. So Ryan wants us to listen to Crimson Glory. Uh, that's the name of the band. And then Azrael is the uh, name, name of the, the song. song. Let's do it.
So, so he, Astra, he sounded ahead. bad at first, but then it kind of sounded like he could have been Jesus. No. Astra, Angel Mercy? Asrael is a, uh, is, in Islam, Asrael is the angel of death. Mm-hmm. And there's a pretty funny story about which angel was going roaming through them with the the death angel in Egypt. Exodus. Yeah. Uh, that's a very complex question because um, some people believe that that was Jesus, and I'm one of them. But he's not named Israel. In Judaism, in the intertestamental period, Israel was not so much the angel of death as much as like the angel who recorded your fate. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people think that he's the angel that determines your fate. He doesn't. In Judaism, Yahweh he determines your fate. It. He okay. records your he's kind of like a watcher level type mm -hmm. angel. But so here here's an interesting um interesting hadith. Okay, this is narrated Ibn Hur Abu Huraira. The angel of death was sent to Mos Moses, and when he went to him, Moses slapped him severely. What? Spoiling one of his eyes. The angel went what? back. I swear to God. <laughs> this is in this is in Bukhari, <laughs> and it's narrated by Abu Huraira. If you if you know anything if you know anything about Abu Huraira, he, he, the Isnat chain is is almost flawless. The angel went back to his lord and said, "You sent me to a slave who does not want to die." Allah <laughs> stop. Allah who, who wants to die? I mean, there are some people that want to die, but like. Yeah, the angel went to Musa. He's like, "Hey, man, it's time to go." Musa slapped him in his eye and spoiled his eye. Yeah. Uh, Allah restored his eye and said, Go back and tell him to place his hand over the back of an ox, for he will be allowed to live for a number of years, equal to the number of years coming under his hand. So the angel came to him and told him the same. Then Moses asked, Oh, my Lord, what will be then? He said, Death will be then. He said, Let it be now. He asked Allah that he bring him near the sacred land at a distance of a stone's throw. Allah's messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Were I there, I would show you the grave of Moses by the way near the red sand hill. So, uh, that's the story where Asrael shows up and says, All right, man, it's time to go. And Moses slaps the hell out of him. <laughs> Bang! <laughs> it's really interesting stuff. Um, so, uh, yeah, Moses is like, uh, in the Quran, Moses is, is, a, is a real life gangster. Uh, but there. I mean, would you slap the death angel if it showed up to you? It depends. Depends on, <laughs> on, on what I wanted to do. I would never consider doing such a thing. Well, Moses is a real life gangster. Yeah, you too. You that, like that. <laughs> that Egyptian was all beaten up on his uh, fellow Israelite. It says Moses looked this way and that, and then he and then he uh, killed the guy. Yep. And buried him in the sand. Yeah, but that to me is more reasonable than slapping also, an angel, the death angel. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I, 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 and he spoiled his eye. And he spoiled his eye. I don't know. Okay. There's a really uh, interesting story about uh, Azrael, though, and, and the story about, in Islam, the story I'm about to tell you is, is not as uh, solid as the Bukhari story, but basically at the end of the world, everybody dies. Okay. So everybody's dead, and then um, Allah says, who is left? And then uh, Jibril says, uh, Jibril says, just Michael, me, Azrael and your face, oh, oh Allah. And so then Allah says to Azrael, kill Michael. So Azrael turns to Michael and says, be gone, and Michael dies. And then Allah says, who's left? And uh, Jibril says, me, Azrael, and your beautiful face, oh Allah. And then Allah turns to uh, uh, Azrael and says, kill G Jibril. And Jabril bows down, you know, in sujud. Sujud is the, you know, the, the the worshipful position that they that they take, and it's in in that position where he 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 dies. Azrael kills him, and then Allah says, "Who's left?" And then Azrael says, uh, "Me and your noble face, O Allah." And then Allah says, "Die," and then Azrael dies, and then basically it's so Allah is the only one left. Just like at the beginning, before all creation, he was the only one there. And at the end of the world, he's the only one there. And then basically that proves, you know, because the whole Muslim the superiority of doctrine is la ilaha illallah. You know, there's no there's no God but Allah. And basically it's it's a kind of a bookending creation because mm -hmm. he was by himself before. It's a very sad a, story, though. 
Well, especially the way one of my favorite chicks, the way that he tells it's a very emotional story and they have a nasheed going in the background. It's very, very emotional. Mm -hmm. um, and then the way that he recounts the story, it's very, very emotional. It's, 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 you're a beautiful Especially face, because they don't, they don't have, um, well, we don't believe that that's how it's all going to end, that God's going to obliterate everything and he's just going to be soul standard. Right. But at the same time, we believe in the Trinity, so even if God did that, He Correct. still has the Father, Son, and the Spirit. He would never so be he alone. Would never be alone. Right. But right. in that story, it's just like this. Right. Oh. Right. Which right uh, the Islamic version of monothe monotheism is is um, yeah that's sad is you know Unitarianism, which mm -hmm. is the same in you know Orthodox Judaism. Mm -hmm. So we're we kind of have the the uh, the cool, you know, the Trinitarian thing where God's never ever been alone, but you know, whatever. So, mm -hmm. but it just the way that the guy tells the story is um, is just one of the most amazing, one of the most amazing ways. I'll I'll probably I'll probably put the story I'll probably put the story down there so that you guys can hear it. But it's uh it's pretty cool. <clears throat> um. So anyway, so that's the Islamic side. On the Judaism side, it's uh, oh, Omar Suleiman is the guy that tells the story. On the Judaism side, uh, Israel does the um, um, the fate stuff and also the Angel of Death. Mm -hmm. So it, it doesn't necessarily um, mean he's a bad guy, right? So Azazel is one of the angels uh, that's bad. Mm -hmm. So Azazel is a bad angel, and you'll hear Behemoth refer to Azazel a lot. Yeah, yep. Um, and then, you know, during the Day of Atonement, it says that the, you know, you killed one, sh you know, goat, but then the scapegoat went in the wilderness to Azazel. Mm -hmm. Right. It, it specifically says that he's that going to, to Azazel. Azazel. Yeah. Um, but that's not the same as Azrael, which is mm -hmm. which is which is a different angel, and his job is basically to record and and to do fate and all the rest of it, and that actually played a lot into. There's undertones of, between Romans nine through eleven. There's undertones of of um, Azazel in Romans nine through eleven, where where Paul is talking about predestination and things of that nature. Yeah. Uh, so the whole argument that Paul is having in Romans nine about predestination and free will and all mm -hmm. that that was a scholastic argument that was happening in Judaism hundreds of years before Romans nine showed mm -hmm. up, and Paul is taking a side mm -hmm. um, because the the concept was well, if Azazel has your entire fate you know, written out, then how can you have a free will? And of course the Jews were saying, well, the, 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 the free will Jews were saying, well, that's because Yahweh saw what you were going to do mm -hmm. from beginning to end. And then he just simply informed Azazel mm -hmm. as to what you were going to do. But then that goes into the whole, well, if the future is fixed, then you, you have no choice but to do what that known future is. And so the debate goes on and on and on and on and on. Very interesting stuff. And obviously politics aside, in, in my opinion, in Romans 9 through 11, he takes a certain side. I'm not going to say which one. Read it yourself. Yeah, find out for yourself. <laughs> find out for yourself. Stop trying to ask me about it all this stuff. It said something. Wait a minute. Is this the, yeah, this is the one. Oh. It said something about that he was erasing and writing. How come that's not working when I'm doing erase? Hit Command F. Yeah, I did. Or maybe it was just in the lyric video. Yeah. Did the, you catch that too? The, well, the guy, the guy put some some context in the lyric video, but I don't know where you're saying where he erased anything. I don't see that. I thought it said that he spent his time erasing and writing. Where, oh, well, where does it talk about him writing? I don't know. But what he, the heck? I I don't know where you got that from, Missy. Maybe go, go put that video because the guy had that thing in the video at the end. So maybe he put that in there and you thought that oh, was in the lyrics. Oh, okay. Yeah, cause he did put some extra stuff in there. Yeah, okay. Um, so this is this is coming from a, uh, a perspective of a... So it starts off with the person saying... I've never been in hell before, now I'm falling, falling, heaven's behind the door, they're calling me again. Hidden beyond the light, and the darkness finds me, help me escape tonight, oh, I must find Azazel. Right there, recording and erasing <clears throat> constantly in a large book, the names of men at birth and at death, mm -hmm. um, respectively. So then I was thinking, well, he doesn't really say when it's going to be. <laughs> well, why is he erasing if he knows it? You know well, what I'm remember, saying? Well, remember, remember, in, there's threats in the old, and 
you can might thing. argue in the New Testament where Moses, that was one of the big thing was that if you're going to destroy the Israelites, then blot my name out also from the book of life. Mm -hmm. And so the person who actually blots your name, so when your name is blotted out of the book of life, that means you're dead. I mean, you die. So Moses is basically saying, well, if, if you're not going to take, if you're not going to take the Israelites with you, then blot, then kill me too, because I'm not going without them. Um, so, and again, that's, that's one of the reasons I just loved Moses back in the day, man. He's just, it's just, <laughs> he's intense. He, he's, he's like, can you imagine having a leader like that? Good Lord. Uh, so it's in Exodus 32, 32. And then, you know, you'll have the Mishnah and, 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 you know, Rashi and all those guys are talking about when he's talking about that. Azazel was there and, mm -hmm. and all the rest of it. So Moses says in verse 32, he says, but now, if you will forgive their sin, but if not, please blot me out of your book that you have written. But the Lord said to Moses, whoever has sinned against me, I will blot out of my book. <laughs> so he's like, I'm not going to blot you out of my book, Moses, because mm -hmm. these these people, which is a pretty cool story where mm -hmm. Moses is like putting himself between mm -hmm. um, the uh, the people and, and their Do you think judgment. that Paul was influenced by that when he said, like, basically, let me be accursed? For my people, like, well, that's why I said that. Oz, there, there are hints of Azazel in Romans nine through eleven. Yeah. So where he says, "I could wish myself to be accursed, and my camp yeah. in the corner of the flesh." Da da da. Paul is taking a sort of Moses type role mm -hmm. between God and his people. Um, mm -hmm. But Moses, but Paul basically learns from Moses because Moses is like, "I'll take, you know, I'll die with them." And God says, "Whoever sinned against me, I'll do it." Mm -hmm. So that's why Paul says, "I could wish," mm -hmm. because he understands from that story that that's that's not how God operates. Mm -hmm. Um, oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. So, and the other thing is, is that that there was somebody who was blotted out of the book of life for the sake of the Israelites, and it wasn't Moses, and wasn't Paul. It was Jesus. Mm -hmm. So God's basically yep. like, look, bro, <laughs> you're not better than Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Take a step back, sir. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. That's why he said, yeah, like, okay. Right. Um, so. So good. yeah, so the Oz, Azazel is Oz, Azrael is is a is a very important um, you know watcher, powerful angel in in the intertestamental period, um, and they're like I said, whenever you hear about the Book of Life or even the threat in Revelation where it says um, if you uh, change any of the words of this book, God will add to him uh, the plagues that are written in this book. It's implied that Azrael is the one that does the, mm. the, the basically the bureaucracy, the bureaucratic work of, really of, like that name. of handling all that and all the rest of it. So, Azrael? Yeah, he, he's a... It sounds like Israel, but it's got, it's very cool. Mm -hmm. I forgot what it means. It's something of God. Um, obviously, you have that L in there. Right, mm -hmm. um, and then in in Islam, it's I L Asrael I L because Ilahi is God in Arabic. Yep. So um, I forgot the name meaning though. The naming for Asrael means angel of God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> of God something. <laughs> of course, of course, yeah, of God something. Um, so really, really interesting stuff. And and so this guy, the, the in the in verse one, the guy is it, I'm uh, this is a human being, I think, never been in hell before. I'm falling, falling, and he says I must find Azrael, and then yeah, Azrael, re yeah, go ahead. Azrael responds and says I'm the darkness hiding within your mind, walking beside you. I lock the gates to hell. I toll the final bell. I am forever. I'm the blinding light, probing the endless light. There's no escaping me. Again, that's Asrael as a determiner of fate. A lot of people believe that Asrael determines fate. He doesn't, but we continue. Wake in your darkest dream. When it started, dream, I thought we were talking about, you know, like when the angels sinned and they fell, you know, never yeah. been in hell before. And it was so sad to hear it like that. Like, yeah, I've always, you know, had a certain, I don't you know. always feel sorry. She yeah. literally has sympathy for the devil. You and Tertullian. Yeah. Tertullian thought that the devil was going to repent at the end. He was ever going to save that that We were all going to dance around like at the end of Star Wars. I wish. Uh, okay. It depends on the day. I don't. I don't. I don't wish that. I mean, he's, look at all the junk that's happening in the world today. That's your boy. Yeah. That you feel no, all sorry. Yeah, for. I know. I know. No, sir. I know. No, sir. Go ahead. What were you going to say? Yeah. No, that's it. Um. So is he saying? Azrael is the one that locks hell? 
Yeah, I, I lock the gates of hell. I told the final bell. I am forever. So this this is sort of the idea that Azrael actually determines fate when technically in Judaism he does not determine fate. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, and even in Islam he doesn't determine fate because Moses <laughs> gave him an eye jammy, literally. Mm -hmm. um, so, so Azrael is like given some superpowers here that he doesn't have generally in Judaism or Islam, but that's that's okay because it's a it's a uh, a lot of people believe that about Azrael, even though it doesn't say that. Okay. <laughs> Stand at the end of space, reach out to touch my face, I am Omega Azrael. See, like... Yeah, I was like, whoa! Jesus, you know, Jesus does, you know, yeah. I'm Alpha and Omega. Omega is the last uh, uh, letter in the uh, Greek mm. alphabet. And so, when you say, I'm Alpha and Omega, I'm beginning and end. What's interesting is, he doesn't say, I'm Alpha, he just no, says, he I'm just Omega. Says Omega. Because, again, he's he's the death angel. Mm -hmm. the smart yeah. lyrics. Mm -hmm. Smart lyrics. He's on the yeah. end. Um, so, it's a, it's a really good song. And it's really interesting, too, because I'm your guide to Valhalla, which is Norse Viking, you know, theology is being combined with this, you know, mm -hmm. Middle Eastern, ancient Near Eastern, uh, the, well, Second Temple theology. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then technically Muhammad would be medieval period. Mm -hmm. So he, you're combining really, really cool things. And then, and then he says, he refers to him as an angel of mercy, which is really, really interesting. I thought so too. I thought it was interesting. One, that's when I was like, well, wait a minute, are we supposed to, is this talking about Jesus? Because Jesus is, is obviously the angel of mercy. But at the same time, I was thinking, well, if it's the death angel that we're talking about, there are certain <clears throat> instances where death is merciful. You know, so I thought maybe that's where they were kind of... Yeah, and obviously a postscript would be in that, that is... Obviously Moses is, didn't see it It as is mercy. left to God. It's left to God to do that mercy. It's not mm -hmm. for us to yeah. do mercy killing. Yeah. But yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. And, um... I were, would, though. If, if I, you like, even when I see those... No, no, no. Like, if I was, like, just a regular person, and I put myself back, and, like, they were you know, crucifying you, and I had an arrow, and I could shoot straight into your heart, I would, yeah. I would do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. I, I hear you. I'd give you a mercy kill. I hear you. I hear I you. mean, it would, it would kill me to be the one that killed you, but... Yeah, we were to watch you suffer and suffer and so I guess we were we were talking we were uh I was watching this thing on World War One and uh the guy was talking about how he he had to kill one of his friends because mm -hmm. the guy, you know, he was torn to shreds and everybody was advancing and, and he was his friend was in a pretty bad way and mm -hmm. so he said uh he shot him and then he said he goes, So that hurt me yeah. you know, and, and yeah, tough stuff. <laughs> um Fly on the wings of glory, burn in the depths of hell, your your life creates a doorway, death holds the key. So, basically, how good or bad you are is going to determine whether you fly on the wings of glory or if you burn in the depths of hell, mm -hmm. right? Um, your life creates a doorway of either one, and then death is the key. Mm -hmm. um, which, of course, is is not the Christian message. The Christian right. message is none of us deserve to fly on the wings of glory, no matter how much good you did, because no matter... All the good you do cannot undo all the bad you've done. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes we get this and sometimes we don't. So if a guy's a serial killer and he kills nine people, mm -hmm. and then he says, oh, I killed nine people, I feel, and he's genuinely sorry, mm -hmm. and so then he goes and saves nine lives, that's great that you saved those nine lives, but you still have nine families that you right. destroyed. Right. And so, um, you know, you're still, you're not getting out of jail mm -hmm. or you're not going to dodge the death penalty. You're still a murderer. And so I think in that like extreme context, extreme in our eyes, we can say, oh, okay. But from a Christian perspective, that's how God deals with all sin. Right. Because right. all sin is destructive. Um, and we're, we've seen it today. You know, mm -hmm. we see it in this day and age where you've got people doing horrible, terrible mm -hmm. things. Um, whether it's the cops, you know, beating the hell out of people, abusing their power, or it's rioters shooting, the, you know, that, that cop David Dorn just got shot up and left in the street after, you know, X amount of years. He was retired, the guy. And he, he's bleeding out on Martin Luther King Drive, ironically enough. And so it's, it's uh, you know, and he got killed by a black dude. So, <laughs> so it's like, 
we like to, to grade on a curve and say, hey, you know, whatever. But there are a lot of sins that led up to that sin of that guy getting shot yeah. in the street. And there are a lot of sins that led they're up to those. They're not disconnected. Yeah, they're, they're all connected to each other. We like to separate them. And then we like to say, the ones that we wouldn't do, that's really evil. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I've, I've sat across murderers and they have all these judgments for, for mm -hmm. other type of criminals. Mm -hmm. And it just so happens to be those crimes that mm -hmm. they haven't committed. All of us are like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I said to my, my guy. I said, don't you find it convenient that all the really evil stuff that you think You've is never done. really evil stuff that you don't do and you know and you know people you know like I said I've, I've, I've sat I've sat across some murderers who who feel absolutely no remorse for what they've done mm -hmm. um, but they're so willing to judge other people mm -hmm. and it's like hello and I'm like that's how God looks at all of us when we judge people mm -hmm. like no, you know, there's a scale, obviously, of evil. 100%, I agree. There's absolutely a scale of evil, but it's still evil. <laughs> and you got to think about it. Like, if you were a completely pure being, mm -hmm. see, that's the thing. Is like, we say things like white lies and things like that because we are born lying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it says the, the wicked uh, come forth from the room speaking lies, mm -hmm. <laughs> the scripture says. <laughs> Anybody who's ever had a two-year-old, knows that that's the case. So we're just born, you know, lying. we're so used to it, and it's so ubiquitous among all of us, you know, the lying, the cheating, the stealing, the whatever, that we can't say that that's evil because then we'd be calling ourselves evil. Mm -hmm. And then there are other types of sins that God in his grace holds most of us back from. And so instead of saying, hey, God held me back from that sin. We say, oh, I don't do that. I'm a good person. And that guy, that guy is evil because he's a murderer or he hurts children or da-da-da-da-da. So obviously from our perspective, um, none of us by ourselves can fly in the wings of glory. All of us are, are deserving of hell. Mm -hmm. And he, biblically, obviously, there's degrees of punishment in hell. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in Luke 12, he said the, the servant who knew his master's will but uh, did not do it will receive many blows, and the one that did not know his master's will and, and operated against it will receive few blows. So there are degrees of punishment in hell, degrees of reward in heaven. Um, and this is why Christianity is offensive to people, because you're saying that, you know, you're evil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had a very long discussion with a good friend of mine about it. But um, so that's not, that's not, you know, from a biblical perspective, your life is not the is not what creates the doorway to glory. It's Jesus's life and death and life again that mm -hmm. creates the the key to glory and is a differentiation between, you know, heaven and hell, however you conceive heaven and hell to be. So, um, but at the same time, he's combining a lot of ideas and things like that. Uh, and I'm always amazed at how well read these guys are. Because mm -hmm. to combine Valhalla with Asrael and things of that nature, like, that's not... And this is older. Yeah, 1986, I think. Yeah, th yeah, this is not like, you know. Yeah. You know, most Christians, they hear this stuff, they have no idea what this guy's talking about. <laughs> this guy, you're talking about Islam, Christianity, Judaism, yeah. and uh, yeah. Norse, Norse theology. I mean, that's that's pretty, in you know, all packed up into a, what, a five-minute song, five-and-a-half-minute mm -hmm. song. Um, you know, that's why a lot of, sometimes, like, I just like, wish, like, I could tell some Christians like man just listen to this song mm -hmm. like you don't have to agree with everything that these guys are saying but can you at least respect the fact that these guys have done the work mm -hmm. especially you know Nergal is in a class by himself I think but like can you respect the fact that these people have done the work and mm -hmm. maybe know a little bit more about your religion than you do mm -hmm. <laughs> but like it's immediately like oh it, uh, you know, oh, it's the devil, and oh, that's right. It's the devil worship. You know, it's ah, oh, it's so frustrating sometimes. But that's my crew. I love yep. Christians. I love Christianity. You know, we'll we're stick always, by you. We're, we're gonna stick by you no matter what. Oh, by the way, shout so, out to E Fog for the shirt. Yeah, pretty good song. I think that um, sonically, what he sounded like vocally, it was something that to me, I was like, oh no, I think this is like another Judas Priest thing. Where initial like I don't have a category that it really fits into. Yeah. Um, which doesn't mean that it's bad. It was just hard for me to be like, what do I think about this? So I think that given more time, the score would be higher for me. Um, so I'm gonna go with an eight point seven 
but like I said, I think that it would actually be higher because I think that probably the vocal style is something pretty unique and special. I but. think you're crazy. <laughs> this is a 9.6 for me. And the, one of the big things about this, this song was I've been missing that Iron Maiden mm -hmm. lead guitar mm -hmm. that kind of carries the verse feel. Yeah. Um, which they had in this song, so I've, I've been missing that for a while, because the last Maiden song we listened to didn't have that, this one does, and for that I'm very, very grateful. So, um, yeah, that, that's that's why this is getting a 9.6 for me, because it's got that old school Iron Maiden feel, and I've thoroughly enjoyed it! Alright. Been out! Sorry out! Gone! Don't punch any angels in the eye, you weirdos!